So you know what they say about April showers. Of course, they bring marijuana flowers. Well, they don't say that, but we're going to go with that today. Listen, we're outside of the Eaton Hotel in Northwest Washington. This is going to be the headquarters for the National Cannabis Festival. And Caroline Phillips is with us. She's the executive director and founder, actually, of the National Cannabis Festival. Coming up this weekend, this is a big event for you. We've had to put a pause on it for the past couple of years. What can we expect from this festival? We are so excited to be bringing the full festival program back to Washington, D.C. Is it fair for me to call you the D.C. Cannabis Queen? I feel like we can do that for this event, right? Maybe the D.C. Cannabis Convener. How about that? Convener. Perfect. Why is it so important for you, particularly as a, as a black woman, to, to lead and, and found this event? So I really wanted to create an event that was affordable for our community, accessible for people, but also educated people not only on the opportunities in the industry, but the challenges that do lie ahead for us, both at the federal and state level. And as a black woman working in live events, it was very important for me to carve out a space for myself and other women just like me to have opportunities in this industry. A lot of people don't know this or maybe they don't recognize it, but there are not a lot of black and brown people in leadership positions with live events. What would you say is the biggest thing that you're excited for at this festival this weekend? I'm so excited to see the community come out. One of the things that makes National Cannabis Festival so unique is the wide age range and the, all of the backgrounds of the people that attend the festival. It's such a diverse community and so many good vibes. I would think for a lot of people, this is probably gonna be one of the first big events that they've been able to attend in more than two years. Very true. Is there a perpetual stigma that you have to battle? 100%. I think in the first few years of working on the festival, there were a lot of companies and businesses in DC that were hesitant to work with me because of the stigma of cannabis and the cannabis community. The incorrect stigma, might I add. The work we do is important. We help patients, we're helping build a new industry, and we're helping make a new industry more accessible to people who deserve it. I think a lot of people might operate under the misconception that the National Cannabis Festival is, let's just show up and smoke out. Maybe that's a part of it, it's definitely not all of it. Definitely not all of it. I mean, how can you have an event in Washington, D.C. that doesn't have strong advocacy vibes? So that's what the National Cannabis Festival is about. First and foremost, we want to celebrate the nonprofit groups that have worked so hard to get us to this point with cannabis legalization. After that, we just want to have a great time. You know, I absolutely love that last point, Adam, that she talked about. Yeah, that is part of it, but it is D.C., so we got to bring the advocacy, and that's what we came here for. I was very curious about her background. Like, did she come from the, uh, you know, the organizational space, or did she just come straight from weed? No, she came up through uh, events. So she is somebody who, who came up wanting to do big events and wanting to plan them, just didn't have a lot of opportunities, as you heard from her background. Where we are right now, Reese, I just want to point this out to you real quick. We're in the lobby of the Eaton Hotel, which, as we pointed out, is the HQ for the NCF. And if I could just get blunt with you here for a second, I want to show you some of the stuff that they've got going on in here. All sorts of marijuana-themed uh, items, so you can see that some of the merch over here, of course, to my left, uh, Mike, follow me over here. You got plenty of munchies because you know that they're going to be needed and on tap this week. Uh, about an hour ago, we talked with uh, uh, Phil Hedgeman from Southeast Ratchet Cakes. It's like a cereal treat. So he's got some merch uh, laid out here. They've got some. Uh, some t-shirts for the National Cannabis Festival. And I want to talk to you about a couple of things that are going on, because this isn't just Reese, a 420 thing. This is a thing that they're celebrating all week long. So leading up to this weekend, where they're going to have this massive concert at RFK with Wiz Khalifa, Wiz Khalifa Ghostface Killer, and others. Uh, and then on Sunday, they're going to have the National Cannabis Championship, where they're judging ganja. Uh, and then on Friday, there is the National Cannabis uh, Policy Summit, where they're talking about all the legislative and government things that have to do with marijuana around the country and how they can step up and try to advance laws in all of the states. So it isn't just a, hey man, let's show up and smoke out kind of event. This is a serious event where they want people to have fun, but they also want to educate people and learn a lot more about how far they can take the cannabis culture. Now you definitely had me at Southeast Ratchet Cakes, but I definitely want to throw up another alley-oop <laughs> for a blunt pun. You're, you have the floor. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, we might, we might bring one of those back. And, and it was no coincidence, by the way, that this was my first story back from this past weekend. THC and cannabis, they have a lot of anti-inflammatory properties. So uh, it's going to be a nice restful evening after you this are last in shot. The, you are in the right place. Well, welcome back, and I'm glad that <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together and Touche wearing the green shirt as well. I see you, you've made a home for yourself.